of the devil's head in the valley perilous and of the customs of folk in diverse isles that be about in the lordship of prester john from the travels of sir john mandeville thirteen hundred to thirteen seventy one this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Beside that isle of Mistarac, upon the left side nigh to the river Pison, is a marvellous thing. There is a vale between the mountains that dureth nigh a four mile, and some men clepe it the vale enchanted some clepped it the vale of devils and some clepped it the vale perilous in that vale men hear oft times great tempests and thunders and great murmurs and noises all days and nights and great noise as it were sound of tabors and of nakers and of trumps as though it were of a great feast this vale is all full of devils and hath been always and men say there that it is one of the entries of hell in that vale is great plenty of gold and silver wherefore many misbelieving men and many christian men also go in often time for to have of the treasure that there is but few come again and namely of the misbelieving men nay of the christian men neither for anon they be strangled of devils and in mid place of that vale under a rock is a head and the visage of a devil bodily full horrible and dreadful to see and it showeth not but the head to the shoulders but there is no man in the world so hardy christian man nay other but that he should be a dread to behold it and that it would seem him to die for dread so is it hideous for to behold for he beholdeth every man so sharply with dreadful iron that be evermore moving and sparkling as fire and changeth and stirreth so often in diverse manner with so horrible countenance that no man dare not nigheth towards him and from him cometh out smoke and stinking fire and so much abomination that aneath no man may there endure but the good christian men that be stable in the faith enter well without peril for they will first drive them and mark them with the token of the holy cross so that the fiends may have no power over them but albeit that there be without peril yet natheless nay be they not without dread when that they see the devils visibly and bodily all about them that make full many diverse assaults and menaces in air and in earth and aghast them with strokes of thunder blasts and of tempests and the most dread is that god will take vengeance then of that that men have misdone against his will and ye shall understand that when my fellows and i were in that vale we were in great thought whether that we durst put our bodies in adventure to go in or not in the protection of god and some of our fellows accorded to enter and some not so there were with us two worthy men friars minor that were of lombardy that said that if any man would enter they would go in with us and when they had said so upon the gracious trust of god of them we let sing mass and made every man to be striven and household and then we entered fourteen persons but at our going out we were but nine and so we wist never that our fellows were lost or else turned again for dread but we saw them never after and those were two men of greece and three of spain and our other fellows that would not go in with us they went by another coast to be before us and so they were and thus we passed that perilous vale and found therein gold and silver and precious stones and rich jewels great plenty both here and there as us seemed but whether that it was as us seemed i wot never for i touched none because that the devils be so subtle to make a thing to seem otherwise than it is for to deceive mankind and therefore i touched none and also because that i would not be put out of my devotion for i was more devout then than ever i was before or after and all for the dread of fiends that i saw in diverse figures and also for the great multitude of dead bodies that i saw there lying by the way by all the vale as though there had been a battle between two kings and the mightiest of the country and that the great part had been discomfited and slain 
and i trow that on neath should any country have so many people within him as lay slain in that vale as us thought the which was an hideous sight to see and i marvelled much that there were so many and the bodies all whole without rotting but i trow that fiends made them seem to be so whole without rotting but that might not be to mine advice that so many should have entered so newly nay so many newly slain without stinking and rotting and many of them were in habit of christian men but i trow well that it were of such that went in for covetous of the treasure that was there and had overmuch feebleness in the faith so that their hearts nay might not endure in the belief for dread and therefore were we the more devout a great deal and yet we were cast down and beaten down many times to the hard earth by winds and thunders and tempests but evermore god of his grace hope us and so we passed that perilous vale without peril and without encumbrance thanked be almighty god after this beyond the vale is a great isle where the folk be great giants of twenty-eight foot long or of thirty foot long and they have no clothing but of skins of beasts that they hang upon them and they eat no bread but all raw flesh and they drink milk of beasts for they have plenty of all bestial and they have no houses to lie in for they eat more gladly men's flesh than any other flesh into that isle dare no man gladly enter for if they see a ship and men therein anon they enter into the sea for to take them and men said us that in an isle beyond that were giants of greater stature some of forty-five foot or of fifty foot long and as some men say some of fifty cubits long but i saw none of those for i had no lust to go to those parts because that no man cometh neither into that isle ne into the other but if it be devoured anon and among those giants be sheep as great as oxen here and they bear great wool and rough of the sheep i have seen many times and men have seen many times those giants take men in the sea out of their ships and brought them to land two in one hand and two in another eating them going all raw and all quick another isle is there towards the north in the sea ocean where that be full cruel and full evil women of nature and they have precious stones in their iron and they be of that kind that if they behold any man with wrath they slay him anon with the beholding as doth the basilisk another isle is there full fair and good and great and full of people where the custom is such that the first night that they be married they make another man to lie by their wives for to have their maidenhead and therefore they take great hire and great think and there be certain men in every town that serve of none other thing and they clep them cabaderas that is to say the fools of wanhope for they of the country hold it so great a thing and so perilous to have the maidenhead of a woman that them seemeth that they that have first the maidenhead putteth him in adventure of his life and if the husband find his wife maiden that other next night after she should have been lain by the man that is assigned therefore peradventure for drunkenness or for some other cause the husband shall plain upon him that he hath not done his devoir in such cruel wise as though the officers would have slain him but after the first night that they be lain by they keep them straightly that they be not so hardy to speak with no man i asked them the cause why that they held such custom and they said me that of old time men had been dead for deflowering of maidens that had serpents in their bodies that stung men upon their yards that they died anon and therefore they held that customs to make other men ordained therefore to lie by their wives for dread of death and to essay the passage by another rather than for to put them in that adventure after that is another isle where that women make great sorrow when their children be ye born and when they die they make great feast and great joy and revel and then they cast them into a great fire burning and those that love well their husbands if their husbands be dead they cast them also in the fire with their children and burn them and they say that the fire shall cleanse them of all filths and of all vices and they shall go pured and clean into another world to their husbands and they shall lead their children with them 
and the cause why that they weep when their children be born is this that when they come into this world they come to labor sorrow and heaviness and why they make joy and gladness at their dying is because that as they say when they go to paradise where the rivers run milk and honey where that men see them in joy and in abundance of goods without sorrow and labor in that isle men make their king evermore by election and they ne choose him not for no nobleness nor for no riches but such one as is of good manners and of good conditions and therewithal rightful and also that he be of great age and that he have no children in that isle men be full rightful and they do rightful judgments in every cause both of rich and poor small and great after the quantity of the trespass that is misdone and the king may not doom no man to death without assent of his barons and other men wise of counsel and that all the court accord thereto and if the king himself do any homicide or any crime as to slay a man or any such case he shall die therefore and he shall not be slain as another man but men shall defend in pain of death that no man be so hardy to make him company nay to speak with him nay that no man give him nay sell him nay serve him neither of meat nay of drink and so shall he die in mischief they spare no man that hath trespassed neither for love nay for favour nay for riches nay for nobleness but that he shall have after that he hath done beyond that isle is another isle where is great multitude of folk and they will not for no thing eat flesh of hares nay of hens nay of geese yet they bring forth enough for to see them and to behold them only but they eat flesh of all other beasts and drink milk in that country they take their daughters and their sisters to their wives and their other kinswomen and if there be ten men or twelve men or more dwelling in an house the wife of average of them shall be common to all that dwell in that house so that every man may lie with whom he will of them on one night and with another another night and if she have any child she may give it to what man that she list that hath companied with her so that no man knoweth that whether the child be his or another's and if any man say to them that they nourish other men's children they answer that so do over men theirs in that country and by all end be great plenty of cockadrills that is a manner of a long serpent as i have said before and in the night they dwell in the water and on the day upon the land in rocks and in caves and they eat no meat in all the winter and they lie as in a dream as do the serpents these serpents slay men and they eat them weeping and when they eat they move the over jaw and not the nether jaw and they have no tongue in that country and in many other beyond that and also in many on this half men put in work the seed of cotton and they sow it every year and then groweth it in small trees that bear cotton and so do men every year so that there is plenty of cotton at all times item in this isle and in many other there is a manner of wood hard and strong whoso covereth the coals of that wood under the ashes thereof the coals will dwell and abide all quick a year or more and that tree hath many leaves as the juniper hath and there be also many trees that of nature they will never burn nay rot in no manner and there be nut trees that bear nuts as great as a man's head there also be many beasts that be clept oracles in arabia they be clept gerfonts that is a beast palmly or spotted but is but a little more high than is a steed but he hath a neck of twenty cubits long and his croup and his tail is as of an heart and he may look over a great high house and there be also in that country many camels that is a little beast as a goat that is wild and he liveth by the air and eateth none nay drinketh not at no time and he changeth his color oftentimes for men see him often scythes now in one color and now in another and he may change him into all manner colors that him list save only into red and white there be also in that country passing great serpents some of six score foot long 
and they be of diverse colours as red red green and yellow blue and black and all speckled and there be others that have crests upon their heads and they go upon their feet upright and they be well a four fathom great or more and they dwell always in rocks or in mountains and they have always the throat open of whence they drop venom always and there be some wild swine of many colours as great as be oxen in our country and they be all spotted as be young fawns and there be also urchins as great as wild swine here we clept them porks de spine and there be lions all white great and mighty and there be also of other beasts as great and more greater than is a destrier and men clept them loranks and some men clept them odenthos and they have a black head and three long horns trenchant in the front sharp as a sword and the body is slender and he is a full felonious beast and he chaseth and slayeth the elephant there be also many other beasts full wicked and cruel that be not mickle more than a bear and they have the head like a boar and they have six feet and on every foot two large claws trenchant and the body is like a bear and the tail as a lion and there be also mice as great as hounds and yellow mice as great as ravens and there be geese all red three sizes more great than ours here and they have the head the neck and the breast all black and many other diverse beasts be in those countries and elsewhere thereabout and many diverse birds also of the which it were too long for to tell you and therefore i pass over at this time end of of the devil's head in the valley perilous and the customs of folk in diverse isles that be about the lordship of prester john by sir john mandeville thirteen hundred to thirteen seventy one